This box contains three times the original power of my mini bike. Let's unbox it. It's finally time to admit it. I'm in way over my head into this. What was supposed to be just a quick refresh in two episodes has turned into an absolute cutting, welding, painting and buying new parts frenzy. I've cleaned it up, repainted it, installed new front and rear suspension, and now it's time for the biggest modification yet, an engine twice the size and three times the power of the original Honda Lump. But does it actually run? Christmas today? I have another box actually. <laughs> Some more examples of me being very irresponsible with money. This has more power, baby. This should have about three times more power than the original engine of the Honda. And we will do the unboxing. Mm, un, un, uh, unbagging. Are you excited? Look at that. Ooh. I ordered it with the additional pieces like the carburetor and CDI and all the stuff. All right, so this is Jean 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 155cc. Uh, it's a complicated name, man, I cannot remember. Anyway, this should have about 18 horsepower. Literally three times more powerful than the end. I, I cannot see what could go wrong. Like, uh, can we make it any more dangerous than 30 is? The plan for today is start it on the table just to make sure that it's actually running. I know that it, it is half broken. It needs a top end rebuild, it's smoking. First, we put it in the, in the bike and see if it actually works. Oh, I'm pretty pumped to finally receive the new engine. Can't wait to feel the difference between 6 and 18 horsepower. Hopefully, no surprises this time. Let me know in the comments if you think the size matters. I want to put it in. Yeah, I just want to see how it looks. <laughs> Twice the power! <laughs> Twice the power! You know the song? I never heard that song, man. It's Public Enemy, it's like 1990s. Before mounting the engine, obviously I had to test fit it and wow, it looks mean. Let me know in the comments what y'all think. Will it fit? Alright, I don't know if you see, but one of these tabs is the one that's um, in the way of making things. So I'm gonna take the engine, I'm gonna bloop, burn it around, put it in and see which one is it that I need to cut off. Yeah, okay, so this side that I need to cut off. You see this tab here, the, the inner one? The, and it's it's literally obstructing the engine to enter this way, this way. No, 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 no. Right about now, I'm really happy that I painted this frame. Good stuff. I need to cut this part out to be able to put the engine in. I guess uh, angle grinder and let's go. <laughs> well then, doesn't look too bad. Let's get the engine in. Come think of it. I'm really happy I painted the frame first, eh? That's a great decision right there. <laughs> well, like it's good weather at least. On to the next thing. So I here need to cut off this. It's not ideal. I'll have to box it in afterwards. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna box it in with another metal and weld it. Now strap yourselves in. You're about to witness absolute sacrilege. I'll be cutting a 52 year old classical motorcycle like my baby brother's birthday cake. This was one of those deals where at first it looks like just a small corner will be enough to get it in. But with every test fitting of the engine, it just had to cut more and more. Oh, and speaking of cutting, cut me some slack and make sure you subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment and a like. After this episode, I will definitely need to clean up all the cuts that I have made. And also, my plan is to weld metal inside the frame where I cut the hole to restore some structural integrity. We don't want the bike to fold over like a banana. I also read about other ways to fit the engine in. It would be to push the sides of the frame outwards. Though I thought cutting is a better choice because pushing the frame outwards would certainly change the geometry of the bike and who knows what else. It might result into tiring the metal and make it more prone to folding over. All in all, this was about 4 hours of cutting and measuring and trying to squeeze the engine in, so it left me pretty depressed. Honestly, I had hoped it would be a plug and play situation. And by the way, if you want to see some stuff before everybody else, or you just want to support me, make sure you check out my Patreon. Thanks a lot, now let's get this sucker fixed. It is in, however, I do have about 80% less bike. Basically, I had to strip the frame quite a lot. So this is the biggest cut. It actually needs to be cut a little bit more. Obviously, there's a huge gaping hole from inside here. This was a little bit cut. Otherwise, on this side, all pretty good. There was a lot cut here. 
and cut here and cut here. It would be best to have like an engine mount here as well, connecting these two. So, uh, shall we move on to the next things? Welcome back to Man Cave Garage. Today, we have another opening time. We open. So I ordered some more stuff with the money I don't have. And this stuff should get us riding that. These are the brakes. But more importantly, oh yeah. That gives me a stiffy. This is a... Um, a wire for an eight pin charging system. So we well guys, as you would know, I'm a big advocate for safety. <laughs> I'm gonna put the rear brakes on before I start the engine. Cause otherwise I'll start the engine, I'll go for a ride without brakes and that would be stupid. And I am definitely not a well-known doer of stupid. And this time I need to be better prepared than with the original engine. No brakes might be too dangerous even for me. The bicycle steering wheel is too fat and the throttle tube doesn't fit, so I'm borrowing steering wheel from the pit bike, which proved to be useful in more than one occasion. I almost decided to block off the oil cooler exits, but thank god for Google. I found out that if I had just blocked it off, I would have caused a catastrophic oil starvation to the cylinder head, so instead I installed the oil cooler. Just to prevent any runaway throttle situations, I also rigged up a kill switch just in case things go south and brakes don't work. Well, we are ready, but things did not go quite as planned. I think it's fair to say that I've definitely bought a lemon engine. I've done, I've done anything I could possibly do. I've checked the timing, it's all right. I've adjusted the valves and now they are right as well. So what do you think guys, if we do the last ditch effort and we try to start it anyway? I'm just gonna punch it full with the brake clean and see if I can try to manage to start it. Choke fully open, petrol. Open the throttle fully. Okay. <laughs> Serious kickback. Whew. Oh my God. Little thing that you need to know guys, I also checked the compression of this and the compression is about 75 PSI. It's definitely not good. And that's it for today. Thanks for watching. Did you really think I'm gonna leave you hanging like that? Now, nah, come on, man. Let's take it for a ride. Let's see if I can get it started. Let's go. Well, this would be a really bad time to stop running. Come on. I guess it's safe to say that it doesn't run very well. Well then, and on that highly responsible note, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. You already know. Stay tough, motherfuckers. Just, it's a bike. It's, it's in pro, pro, progress. When, when that's there, it's gonna be angry. It's not gonna be Would cute anymore. It? Yeah, really? it's, it's in progress of things, slowly.